Welcome to Never a Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and I'm very happy to bring you another episode of Never a Dull Moment. Hopefully, it won't be. And so, today's topic in particular is how hard should the knife be for you? How to select a knife's hardness. This is probably something you've never considered. You're you're new to the knife world. You've been buying blocks of knives for a long time. You thought like buying a block of knives was the way to go. The hardness wasn't something on your mind. Now your curiosity has you in this brand new world. The rabbit hole's gotten deep. And all of a sudden, you have completely thought to yourself, well, they keep saying this Rockwell hardness scale. You know, at what point in time did this become like a factor? Well, today I pulled some different knives to bring them out to talk about the hardness, how it affects the ownership that you have, how you use them, sharpen them, and so on. So what I wanna let you know is the Rockwell hardness scale is something that judges the hardness of a lot of items in this particular time, knives. And there is a range that we use in knives in general. The scale is actually quite vast, but in the world that we deal with, we have knives that go down to like 55 and 56, and we have knives that go up into the 70s if you wanna get exotic. But the world that you're gonna see most of the time is gonna start with the knives a lot of us started with, which are the German knives. So I have an example of a German knife here. So the Wusthof and Hinkel brand, um, these are two different brands. This particular knife, you're going to notice it has flexibility, okay? So obviously you should be able to assume that the knife is not that hard, even though it makes it tough. Hardness and toughness are two different things. And because this knife is not that hard, I'm able to get it stuck in some squash, bend it until it flexes a lot. It's tough that it doesn't break. You get it out, but because it's not that hard, it doesn't get that sharp. It loses its sharpness very easily because it's soft steel. And so you bought the knife thinking, wow, this is a sharp knife. At the end of the day, because of this particular type of knife, you're going to have to sharpen it more often. But because it's tough, you're able to do more things without risking chipping the knife, without risking breaking the knife. And it's not something that even concerned you was like possibly chipping or breaking the knife. When you got a little bit more advanced, when you started perusing the different culinary sites and you saw the different things, one of the things that you might have saw, especially when you start venturing into Japanese knives, the influence that Japan had was they started introducing us to 60, 61, 62. And so I'm gonna jump past the cleaver for a second and come back, but I'm gonna get to this very famous on knife on Ryu. He is now retired, the nephew took over. This is an on Ryu original super blue knife. So this knife is literally quite famous, but this knife is sharpened at 61, 62. So what does that mean to you? Well, it's harder. The number went up, so the knife itself is harder. The steel at its hardness is able to give us a sharper edge. Okay, so we're, it's gonna get complicated in just a second, but notice that as the knife gets harder to a certain degree, we were able to get sharper. It's going to hold its edge longer, but this knife has no flex, okay? It has, if I, if I tried to bend this at all anymore, it will snap. If you think of that like teacup, it's so rigid and it's so hard, and you don't really see like a, a teacup flex, right? It will just shatter. So it's hard to where it's so rigid that it doesn't have any play. The moment it breaks, it literally breaks. And so when you start getting above 61, 62 and beyond is when you get into a knife that being brittle and actually chipping or snapping off a piece or a tip, <clears throat> it becomes part of the conversation. So as you go up in hardness, you go, I'm able to get the knife sharper. And if you become a knife nerd, seeking sharpness becomes a thing. And if seeking sharpness becomes a thing, then you get into sharpening the knife yourself, and then you have new problems. The 60, 61, 62, 63, 
This to me is the sweet spot for sharpening. This is when you buy stones to do something and you're able to maintain this yourself. This is a weekly or bi-weekly event to put on an edge, to hone the knife. It's something that you can do to maintain yourself. It's a skill that's uh, easily acquired. The knife itself will hold an extremely sharp edge. And if you look, I'll put a link above. If you look at a video, I was able to take a blueberry lay it down and slice super paper thin um, slices off that blueberry with this particular knife at a hardness of 62. So with that being said, we're going to go up. Let's go back to the cleaver real quick. So we had the 5859. This is the 5960. So this cleaver is a vegetable slicing cleaver. It's very thin so that you can slice through the vegetables. It's not, you know, it's not breaking bones or anything like that. So it doesn't need to be that hard. It allows us to get it thin. It doesn't really have any flex. I mean, I got like maybe a little bit of bend. So if I caught it like a potato or spaghetti squash, maybe it has a little bit of wiggle. Yeah, it's not the best for spaghetti squash. <clears throat> I've tried. Well, that's that they make another version that has more weight uh, on it. Yeah. Okay, this is a vegetable slicing knife. Oh, no, they make it was the a other, thicker you know it was the other one. cleaver. The other yeah, one. they make yeah, a different cleaver. Yeah. She's thinking about a meat cleaver, yep. which is more of a wedge. But um, so when we go past and we get to the 63, so we're still in the sweet spot, right? We have a knife that's good to sharpen. Chipping hasn't really become such a prevalent thing. Now we move over to you know, we got Nakagawa over here. We got a carbon steel. He likes to push it. He's a 63. He teeters on the 64. Now we've got this Sheffield over here by Roland Cutlery. If you watch me sharpen this, sharpen this knife, I had some problems getting it super sharp. It's not that you can't do it, and I'm a great knife sharpener, but we did work. At that point, at the 64, you're able to use your normal uh, stones but depending on the stones some of the stones might be too soft in which the knife itself is harder than the stones and basically you're wearing away the stone and you're starting to not wear away the knife let's get over here real fast and let's get to the idea that we're going to be looking at this Takamura so this powdered steel we've gone up to a 65 now is when you're gonna start reading the comments on chipping okay so when you start reading the comments on chipping itself, you're gonna be missing pieces of steel. Now, if you're not a great knife sharpener, this is a problem. You now have a chunk missing from the knife. You might have to send it off to get it done, or you might have to have a very coarse stone in your collection because now you have to remove metal. Okay, and when you remove metal, you're receding the edge of the knife. Okay, so this knife is extremely great in this performance, okay? This Takamura Powder Steel R2 SG2 Steel, it comes with a wicked edge. It is the, the idea of this company to make a stainless steel knife with a wicked edge. And in doing so, in pushing that envelope, we now have a knife that will hold edge for a long time, get a great edge, but the people who have had problems, chunks are missing from the knife. And then now you have to have that acquired steel. You're a knife collector, but are you a knife sharpener? Some of these things go hand in hand. Now let's get way exotic. Let's go up to the 66 to 67 ZDP 189. This is a knife typically when you purchase it, it's gonna have amazing edge. It is going to be hard and sharp for a very long time. But when it loses its edge, are you sending it out to get it sharpened? You can do it on regular stones, but it's gonna take a great amount of time and patience on your part. So when we, and I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the HAP 40 real quick. The HAP 40 is going up to a 68. Like, wow. So what is happening? The materials and the knives have changed. You never thought when you were purchasing a knife that metallurgy would be something you would have to contend with. As we start to introduce different metals, chromium, vanadium, tungsten, and so on, vanadium in particular, we now have larger molecules. Like So when we create these carbides of things being merged together, we now get into specialty stones. We get into 
something that is so hard it either takes a wicked amount of time with certain stones or you need specialty stones to, and then now you're like man i never meant to be a knife sharpener and, and do all this i just wanted to use my knives in the kitchen so then that means i have my opinion and you're going to have yours so i'm going to share mine with you today I chased all the exotic steels and was so happy to use them. I've sharpened them and realized the frustrations that you can have. And it took time to acquire the knowledge of how to be able to get that sharpness. I live in the 62, 63 area. I like the 64, 65. Have some trouble with always getting the sharpness all the way there. Um, I have all the specialty stones. I have the acquired uh, skill that you need. But for you, the new knife owner, having something that holds an edge longer than the German knives, having something wicked sharp, as literally as sharp as you need a knife to get, you can get it with the 62. Okay? So if you want to, I mean, honestly, everyone knows who's ever asked me the question on this show, what's my favorite knife? It's standing here. It is mm -hmm. the 62 original first knife I ever owned. The original on Ryu Super Blue Hardness 62. You can see that of all the years of doing the, the uh, cutting the blueberries, you can see that the carbon steel is barely tarnished on the edge. It's got a little patina on it. Um, at the end of the day, this is just a, it's a perfect made knife for me. Um, and so you're gonna have to find yours. So whether you bought a knife and become an amazing knife sharpener or whether you don't wanna do it, you know, I definitely love to hear from you in the comments. What's the hardness that's best for you? If you love sharpening knives and you want to see what's the sharpest you can get, you can do it with the 62. You can do it with the carbon steel. If you want to chase the enigma the paradox of trying to get something so hard, so sharp, good luck. It's a lot of man hours, a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill and a lot of patience and bless you for it. But at the end of the day, you're new to knife making, you've fallen down the rabbit hole, you're looking at knives to buy for yourself, and you need to know before you start problems, where do you go? My suggestion, and it's only my opinion, I do not want to force my everything that I believe on you, but my opinion, that 61 to 63, 62 being the sweet spot, I think it'll do right by you. I enjoy these knives and I hope you enjoy yours. Hopefully that was not a dull moment. I look forward to getting the feedback from you, and I'd love to hear a shout out of your favorite knife and the favorite hardness. Thank you for tuning in. We're doing our best to get these shows to you, but we continue to appreciate your support. God bless.